Uh, we're going to have some fun in this session. Are you ready to have some fun? Yeah. Uh, to kick things off, we have seven awesome panelists who are going to help us with this session. So come on up on stage, panelists. You know who you are. Come take a seat. Give them applause. And I would like to invite you, hey, to introduce yourself. So let us know who you are and where you're from to give us some context. And I'll step off stage in case we need to get my mic working. Or is it working now? You can hear me now, can't you? Ah, yeah. oh, cool. Test, mic check, mic check. Can do the Hi, my name, oh. uh, my name is Nicholas Wynn McJetters. I'm from the Middle Partner eLearning Experts. Uh, we are based out of Yorktown, Virginia. Um, if you're familiar with the uh, Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, Yorktown area, you'll find us uh, just over the river. Hi, my name's Michelle Moore, and my husband Jonathan and I are now Moodle partners yeah. on a learning consultant. So that's all. <laughs> Hi, my name is Claire Masha. Um, I'm from Ethink Education, uh, based out of Baltimore. Hi, my name is Brian Kelly. I am with uh, Bongo and I'm based out of Loveland, Colorado. Hi, my name is Fred Dixon. I'm with Big Blue Button, and I'm based out of Auto Ontario, Canada, eh? <laughs> what up, fam? It's Shalimar from Munami, and I am currently moving from Oregon to North Carolina, so a little bit of everywhere right now. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, welcome, panelists. That's great. Um, so, uh, my intro was a little bit weird, but just to put it in context, so I worked with NetSpot, a Moodle partner, years ago, uh, and have been constantly involved with the Moodle community, and I'm currently consulting to Moodle HQ, which is why I've got the orange, uh, orange uh, tag as well, so I'm, I'm kind of part of the team for this, for this week. So, we're going to do something a little bit different, um, and uh, it's kind of inspired by a radio show that I like to listen to in Australia. Uh, we have this awesome scientist called Dr. Carl, and he answers these really weird science questions um, on the radio talkback show. And he does this really nice thing where callers ring in and they say, hey, Dr. Carl, I've got this weird question. Uh, and he's like, what's your name? And like, my name's Susan. And he's like, great, Dr. Susan. Well, I'm glad you asked. And he, call, he calls him doctor every time and everyone really enjoys it and feels special. So for this session, I just want to make, give you all honorary PhDs. Okay, in Moodle. So you're now all Dr. Moodles, congratulations. So we have um, qu quite an extensive list of uh, questions that have already come in from the group and we'll work through as many as we can. But the way we're going to work is this. I will ask the question and then I'm looking for people in the audience to take first swing at giving a response. Now, we're going to divide into two halves. So you guys are team Awesome. <laughs> What's another name? <laughs> you guys are Team Radical! <laughs> and uh, we are going to keep a tally of how many correct answers Team Awesome and Team Radical are going to, uh, to be able to achieve today. And the winner is going to get something really radical and awesome. <laughs> are you excited? <laughs> yes! Okay. Um, so we're going to do this in, in different, um, different categories. And the purpose really of sort of Ask Dr. Moodle is we're going to solve each other's Moodle problems, OK? Um, so I'll get the ball rolling with, with uh, a number of the questions that have already come in through the conference app. Well done, all of you who, who contributed. And as you can see, there's, there's quite a few. Um, and hopefully, we'll get time for some more from the floor as well. But, uh, Let's kick things off. Um, this is a question from Jessica. Uh, so put your thinking caps on, because this is going to go to you, Team Awesome and Radical. Can the new built-in navigation, previous, next, and jump drop-down list be customized by activity? Who would like to offer an answer? Put your hand up, wave it around so we can see it. Can you repeat it, please? Yes, I can. Uh, can the new built-in navigation, Previous, next, and jump drop-down list be customized by activity. There's a hand. 
Okay, there's a hand. There's a hand over there, I see that hand first. Can we get a microphone? What do you think? Uh, no, it can't. Okay, would anyone like to uh, agree or disagree? Wow, this is, this is gonna be really great, I can, I can just tell. I'm gonna need some help spotting the hands that come up, because I have a... So, would someone on this side like to take a swing? That's Emma. She's a troublemaker, watch out for her. All right, Emma, make some trouble. Really crazy, right? <laughs> yes, you can. So with CSS, you could actually pull the code for the activity type, and then you could use CSS to um, manipulate the icons. What do you think, panel? Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's one point to radical. <laughs> so we're like the okay, we're off to a really good start. Here's one from Jenna. If a badge is connected to a course, when a user is removed from the course, will the badge be automatically revoked? Hmm. Yes, I can say it again. If a badge is connected to a course, when the user is removed from the course, will the badge be automatically revoked? Team Radical has some Go over here, we have a hand over here. Uh, the answer is it will do whatever you want it to do. You can set it when you create the badge so that it is never deleted, that it just lives there forever, whether you delete the course or the user is removed from the course. Adjudicators? Do you agree? Yes. I'm relying completely on you. <laughs> Yes, okay, that's another point to Team Radical. Are we keeping score? Can we have an update? Right now, it's Team Radical 2, Team Awesome, about to rally. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Too luck. Okay, uh, anyone who'd like to field this question, not looking at anyone in particular, but if a student completes an assignment, a student com completes an assignment, later it is determined that they need to do it again, how can the teacher change the student's completion status to not complete? There's a hand over here. I don't remember exactly how to change the steps, but there is an option to um, overwrite what they took and then um, allow them as much time as they want. We've done it in the past. Use override? What do you guys think? Nicholas? There's a completion override now, I believe, starting in Moodle 3.3, 3.4. Can we pass the mic down? Oh. If I recall, there is a new completion um, override tool. Uh, debuted as recently as Moodle 3.3, 3.4, if someone knows exactly what version. 3.4, thank you. Uh, so you should be able to go now into the um, course completion report, I believe, and you can manually uh, issue that override. And I believe there's a special icon that's associated as well, I think, that denotes if there is a override in place. I think it's like a red check mark or something like that, if someone's familiar with that screen. Just to, I want to piggyback on that. Also depends on what type of activity you're using, right? Because um, the, I don't know your name, I'm sorry, you're dark right now, but you, <clears throat> that is wonderful for things like quiz that has that user overrides feature, but you can also like revert assignment submissions to draft um, to, is another way to do that. I did not hear you. I'm sorry. So when you, when you do want to contribute, put up your hand and get the attention of our awesome runner. Uh, to grab the microphone to, to comment. Uh, are we satisfied with the answer? Should we, should we give Team Awesome a point? First point! Yes, on the board. Right, here's the next one. Uh, this is from Tonya. Uh, we want to learn about, more about competency. Can I create one set for a whole college and reuse them each quarter, or do I need unique, a unique competency for each class, each quarter? Where are we going first? Okay, we have a radical response. <laughs> right at the back. Back of the school bus. 
You don't have to create it every time it's sitting there once you create it in the competencies. So you can use it every semester, quarter, whatever you use. Are we happy with that response? Yes, okay, well done. Another point to radical. We're zooming through these. Uh, from Troy, we would like to be able to use Moodle to have teachers rate and provide feedback to students. For example, if the students are doing hands-on projects, how can we do this? Saw that hand, real quick. Down the front, please. Not that I'm playing favourites, but it is 3-1. <laughs> Um, I believe they can add an item in the grade book and then just uh, cus just add their feedback to that grade item when they, when they grade it for their student. What do you think? Yeah, but can I add to it? Yeah, please. That's why I you're here. Oh. oh. <laughs> Gosh. So you would make it an assignment and then you would assign a rubric to it and then they could grade each student as they're completing the activity on the rubric. You or also leave feedback comments. Alternatively, there's like the face-to-face plug-in type, right. which allows for booking and sends out communication pieces around the different things. So like you can remind students, hey, you've got to be at this thing on this day to do this, and that also can do all that good stuff. Would anyone else on the panel like to comment? Good. Oh, yeah. Or I believe in Moodle 3.7, you'll be able to use the built-in record plug-in <laughs> to give recording <laughs> feedback. <laughs> And then I'm going to say, why make the teacher do all the work, do a workshop instead, and let the students do the grading. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is the awesome thing about Moodle. There's always like six or seven ways to do something, right? I think we just hit them all. Uh, so one point to each side. Thanks for both of your answers. Uh, who says I can't make a decision? Please, uh, this is from Molly. Please explain how SCORM packages will be implemented in the Moodle app. We currently discourage the app for our learners because SCORM does not work in the mobile version. <laughs> Molly, Martin has something to say about this. Well, it, it, it does. Uh, the mobile app does support SCORM. It may be a particular SCORM package doesn't work, and that just may be because it's badly designed for mobile in general. Um, you still need to recognize you're on a tiny screen and things like that. But in general, SCORMs work. Uh, Danny is here, maybe. I don't know if he's here. Maybe he has a, do you have a more answer? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Who is the charlatan? What are his ideas? Does this guy really know what he's talking about? <laughs> yeah. We only support uh, 1.2. OK, SCORM 1.2. Uh, SCORM 2003 is not supported in the mobile app. So maybe there's a problem, I'm not sure. But yeah, as Martin said, there are some SCORMs that use the right version, but maybe there's, they, they use some API or something that is not supported in a certain device, and then the SCORM fails. There's some JavaScript error or whatever. Would anyone they else should like, work. Anyone else like to comment? Um, I have had some experience with SCORM packages on the mobile app. Um, from what I've been receiving from customers, um, a lot of the things I'm seeing is that the SCORM package is not realizing it's actually on a mobile device. Uh, so for example, it's complaining that the version of Safari or Internet Explorer isn't supported. Um, one thing I would um, encourage you guys to do is to look at the SCORM publishing software you're using to see if it's uh, able uh, to work on a responsive type device, if it's horizontal, vertical, uh, horizontal landscape. Um, I believe Articulate has a Rise product that's designed for mobile. I uh, think the latest versions of Captivate are also able to publish those applications in mobile. So if you are looking for that mobile type support to carry over into the mobile app, uh, it's going to need to be designed with mobile in mind um, out of that um, authorware software. All right, would anyone else like to come in? So just to rewind here, I think we had a Moodle HQ person, a Moodle HQ person, and panel responses. Was that right? So that goes to Team Awesome. <laughs> so it goes to Team Awesome. Wow, whoever recruited Martin. Well done. Uh, can, I, can I move on? 
There's a dispute. Good. Uh, Kelly writes, what is the best way to allow learners to take a quiz three times and then give them the correct answers and feedback after the third attempt? It's a curious use case, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it was a more question. <laughs> Um, probably the best way would be with interactive mode, and then you would use three hints that would give them three attempts, and you could have them showing just the right answer when they get it or at the end. What do you think? I like it. Thanks. Like it. <laughs> Claire? That, I think that would be definitely the advanced use case. You could also not uh, disclose the answers to the student until the quiz is closed under the review options. It's sort okay. of the most straightforward way to do it. There was a hand up over here. Would you like to add in the spirit of evening up? Just a minute. The mic's coming. I'm inclined to agree with um, limit of three and give the responses when the question closes because hints has a tendency to uh, detract. De um, deduct points from the student. So I, I lean away from that one. I mean, you can configure it not to, but the only thing with um, three attempts and then wait for the quiz to close is if the quiz is open for quite a long time and you want to give the response right away, um, you can't do that. But you could do this. You could make a copy of the quiz that gives the responses right away and make it conditional on having completed the real quiz. That's two Very clever. <laughs> All right, I think we're definitely evened up with that extensive... There's more? I was just noting that Team Awesome has not only Mr. Moodle but also Elizabeth Dalton in it. And I, just, I don't know, I don't know. You know well. And I, and I think I think when it was zero three, there might have been some additions to this side of the room for Moodle HQ. So now we're now now the keel is even. So one point each. I hope we're tracking all of this. Right. What's what's the latest tally? Team Radical five. Team Awesome four. Oh, it's really close. Okay. So bonus round. This time I'm going to award a point for the next four people that can ask new questions. Okay, now these, these are going to be how-to questions, how, I, how do I do this particular thing in Moodle. So you guys will ask the questions and we'll direct them at the panel. If you ask a question about uh, one of our integration partners who are represented on the stage, I will award you two points. Ooh. Okay, we've got one question at the back. Um. This is not really a fair question, but it's still one that I, I want to introduce because it's important. So how long till we're going to have blockchain integrated into Moodle? <laughs> is that a how-to question? How do, we, how do you integrate blockchain into Moodle? <laughs> Ethereum. Yeah. Uh, I have a real how-do. Get a chance. How do you turn off local media storage in Moodle and only use a third party like Kaltura, Panopto, et cetera, et cetera? All right, we will take that question. Panel. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's the best way, but you could um, restrict write access to certain directories. Yeah, uh, that, so like, uh, uh. Um, well, what, <laughs> so what I would just do, like when, when I don't want people to use like my, you know, like private files or whatever um, as like a repository, I just hide that and then alter permissions so that people can't add it back. So that way I'm not having to like figure out a way to like disable it entirely, but it's like for all intents and purposes kind of out of their front and center, you know what I mean? It's kind of how I remove it from the 
visual space. You guys with me on that? Yeah, yeah. I agree. Okay. Done it. Okay, we're coming to a really confident conclusion on that question, <laughs> awesome. Hey, I want to invite one additional panel member to come up on screen, Anatoly uh, from IntelliBoard. Give Anatoly a round of applause. <laughs> so if any of you have uh, IntelliBoard questions, you can, you can ask them. Okay, we've got a question over here. So that's one point to Team Awesome for asking the question. We've got one over here. Is there a way to make the participants list more comprehensive? and change the categories of the participants list. So for example, if we need to know certain things about our learners that aren't automatic in the participants list, is there a way to change it? Or is there a plugin to make the roster more robust? Roster slash participants list, because I think it's, that's what it's called in Moodle, participants list, right? So you can see a list of your participants in a, I'm just like jumping yeah. in, I'm sorry, in a few different places, and so it kind of depends on what did I just, yeah, I broke it. Um, what type of information you're looking for? Mm -hmm. So, so like, can you give me a tidbit of like? I can, yeah. yeah we uh, would like to know the um, user ID of the student. So we have technicians and then we want to know their name, we want to know their ID, we want to know the last time they were in class, we want to know um, who their service manager is, we'd like to know their email address. So if there's like this place where there's a comprehensive list of things that we can choose to have pulled into that spot. Sure, Anatoly really wants to answer this question. I'm glad. <laughs> so this is more reporting question. Um, if you have Intelliboard and you go to any of the reports that show learning information, reports can be personalized. You can add all this information very easy and it's instant. So all this data already in Moodle, we just show it to you in the reports. You can show that in, in the Intelliboard app or if you want your instructors to see that information within Moodle, you can make that report available for instructors within Moodle. So there would be a space in Moodle? Yes. So yep. All so Intelliboard is already so much integrated with Moodle that each teacher, once Intelliboard is installed, each teacher has access to their own dashboards. So they can click on Intelliboard and they go to the dashboard where they can choose one of the reports or types of dashboards where they can see all this information. They don't have to do anything extra other than just click a button. Just click that link. Um, probably one additional thing I can think of, um, I don't know if this is going to specifically do for the participants list, but you do have an option in Moodle's gradebook to add uh, fields that display on the gradebook. So I believe by default it displays first name, last name, email address. Um, if those are custom profile fields, you can also add those so that those display on the gradebook. And if you did need some type of uh, report that included that additional information, you could also export that gradebook and that information would go with it. This is the last follow-up question. Sorry, sorry, we're just going to have a conversation where, um, is it uh, uh, something administrative that they uh, Yeah, so the question is, is it something an administrator can do? Um, so you would need to go into your site administrator, grades, grade settings, and you would need to let Moodle know what additional fields you would need to add to the gradebook to display, and that information would also be exported as well. So, there are about seven questions there, and one of those did feature IntelliBoard as a partial answer. So, you came, so I, I think we're going to award one and a half points for that question, which could be a tiebreaker, okay? So we've now got a half point differential. Um, I want to check, does anyone have a question related to Big Blue Button, IntelliBoard, or Bongo? If so, ask it now for your chance for two points. There's one over here.
Great question. Uh, th there's a lot of options, actually. Uh, Bongo, by default, uh, it's, it's an LTI external tool, right? So it's, it's available from your, uh, from your activity menu. Um, I just forgot the rest of the question, honestly. <laughs> I, I, right, it, yeah, the, Bongo has activities built in, so you can upload a, uh, a videos for your activities. Uh, your students can do uh, interactive responses, so you can respond to, to their videos with your video. Um, does that answer your question? Right, right. So, so we're, uh, we're just releasing uh, a plugin for for Moodle, right? Uh, it will automatically integrate an LTI tool into Bongo, so that you can use everything uh, related to Bongo as a plugin inside of Bongo, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the difference between uh, LTI integration versus copy pasting some code into an editor, I think is the question. I'm not exactly sure I understand. I could help you out if you want. Yes, yeah, some of the um, team will help you out. <laughs> uh, I, I think, um, I mean, LTIs can exist in two different ways. You can have one that's just, you know, set up side wide and faculty can add it. You could set it up as a pre-configured tool and I believe you can also set a custom icon for an LTI activity. So you could set it up so that it appears in the activity, uh, uh, activity chooser menu as, you know, and has that icon that kind of draws their attention to it as a video activity type. Yep. Two points to Team Radical. Good question. Do we have any more questions for our integration partners? There's one over here at the back. Um, so today, earlier today, I got a very quick preview of what the Big Button tool does and kind of how it integrates into Moodle and um, things like that. But um, and I was pretty excited because what my company uses right now is we use WebEx with all its uh, advantages and certainly the disadvantages too. So one, my question is, what is one of the biggest questions you hear uh, about the big button tool when it works with Moodle, within Moodle, um, that users normally complain about? So rather, where do you see the biggest problems with integrating the big button tool? This is a good question. So we hear lots of feedback, lots of people, lots of things people want to do. One thing we hear, which sounds really easy, but it's not so easy, is embedding an external video in your class. Like you're doing an online class and you want to embed in a video and control it and do the playback. There's ways to do it, but the video formats can be different. Is the video local? Is it on some content management system? Will it appear in the recording? So that's one thing that we're working on, trying to figure out the best way to do that. But we just try to focus on the core use cases. And w as we've pretty much got those covered, we're now focusing on the, okay, what's the secondary ones? And that's a good example of, you know, I have a class, could be language training where I want to have students hear what the proper sound or pronunciation is of something in Spanish, and then I want them to say it back to me. So playing an audio file or a video file in a class. Great. Two points over here. Um, I'm going to give one more opportunity for a two-pointer. Uh, if anyone has a question for IntelliBoard, or around IntelliBoard. This could be the tiebreaker. There's one over here. <laughs> Radical. So how does IntelliBoard scale from smaller schools, public K-12, up to large universities? So what we have today, we offer not just to K-12 or higher ed, we also offer to corporate. So, uh, it doesn't really matter who you are. If you use Moodle, IntelliBoard will fit you in. So uh, if, you hide, uh, if you hire it and you use faculty and you have a pretty big faculty, we can have users created within IntelliBoard and you can assign specific information to see for your faculty members. If you're K-12, we, um, we just recently partnered with Associ Association for Educational Service Agencies where they serve K-12, they serve schools. So uh, we offer access to data 
to those agencies to see how they can help their own schools and then they can also create accounts for uh, principals, for, uh, f uh, for the teachers, for instructors, or for even district members so they can see information that fits their own needs as well as for teachers and for parents. Parents need to know all the information. We have kids, uh, they probably go to school and uh, they have a student information system like PowerSchool. So right now, they get only grades, but how about your parents would see what uh, kind of activities actually te uh, students are doing every day, taking those. So that's what IntelWord allows you to do already out of the box. Uh, you can take this experience and apply it to higher ed. You bring it to your uh, dean office. You bring it to your other faculty members. If you're corporate, you bring it to different departments. Did I answer? In full? Okay, cool. She just wanted the points, dude. But <laughs> I, no, no, no. I, I really love. She well, genuinely wanted the to point know. is that my team is over there. I think they're doing really great jobs that they don't have any questions. <laughs> so that's really exciting. That's right. That, they've exhausted all questions. So um, our our integration partners uh, are all exhibiting, uh, and they're all in the exhibition space. So. Uh, they're here to answer these kind of questions the next couple of days. So do stop by and, and have a talk to them, put your tricky questions to them, learn the functionality. We're really glad you guys are here. Thanks for that. Um, so uh, I want to move on uh, to another category of question. Now, I, I know we had a roadmap, quest, uh, a roadmap session in the prior session, right? Do you feel like you exhausted your, your roadmap questions or do you want me to pause on that for a few minutes? Who would, who would like us to pause on roadmap so that we can answer a few? Who, who feels like we exhausted? <laughs> okay, people just like, how do I get the points? Um, I think we're going to move on. We'll come back to roadmap. You do have a roadmap. Well, I've got a few as well. So for roadmap, uh, I think Martin and some of the other HQ staff, we would need to call on you. Um, all right, so we'll take five minutes to take some roadmap questions. We'll, we'll take one over here, knowing we did just have a session, but it sounds like there's a few more. Well, it just wasn't covered at all in the roadmap session. So, I, okay. and I don't know if anybody else, I'm in the corporate world, so it might be university versus corporate, but um, a lot of our folks want to be able to export their native Moodle course and put it on another platform, like a Coursera, Udemy, or you know any of the other platforms. Is there any conversation there about that? So I'll check with the panel first. Is that a roadmap question? Or is it a how-to question? Kind of feels like a how-to question. Okay. Oh, it's a how-to? Good, okay. take a swing. I just didn't know if there was something in you the roadmap know. for integration with other platforms. Welcome to the wide world of LTIs. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you've worked with those much, but Moodle has the ability to be not only an LTI consumer, so it's taking in learning artifacts and stuff from out there, but it also can produce those things. So back in the ancient days, um, when you had resources that you wanted to offer to some other organization and you didn't want them to have to have a login to your system, you would have to like export it as a file and then hand it to that person and go, please don't change it because it's my intellectual property. <laughs> um, but you don't have to do that now. You can set up an LTI connector so that people can, I like to call it a wormhole connection because I'm a sci-fi nerd. Um, so people, they don't have to learn a new password or anything, they just go to their native system and then through the wormhole, they get connected to your Moodle course in the Moodle course, you know, in your environment. So um, it's really not very difficult for the user at all to access and you get statistics out of it. You get to see how they're interacting with that and how it's performing and, um, you know, a lot of other systems don't give you as much insight into that kind of thing, so that's pretty cool. Awesome. Everyone remember to engage their bio filters when passing through wormholes. Um, so I think we'll take a point over here. Uh, so Martin, I'm gonna run through a, a handful of other roadmap questions that have come up, and you might like to take a swing at one or two. Sure, cool, can we have a microphone over for Martin for a minute, please? Uh, so here's one from Meg. Why do some activities use different types of navigation? We need more focus on usability and user interface. Yeah, that's actually pretty high in the roadmap. Uh, the, we have a usability team in Moodle now over the past couple of years. We didn't have one before that. Developers used to make interfaces. Uh, we, our UX lead went on a three-month drive around Australia and didn't come back. Um, and 
So we're, we're actually hiring a new one right now. If you know any really good UX people who can lead a team of UX, we, we're looking. But navigation is one of the highest priorities in the Boost stuff and will happen regardless in probably the next release. Kelly asks, what project management tool do you use? <laughs> Uh, it depends on the part of the company. So the, uh, we use Jira. Moodle Tracker is Jira. And that's good for a lot of project management, most developer levels. Uh, we also use Teamwork, uh, teamwork.com, which is a, uh, for some of the management level type stuff. Some projects use uh, Trello. Um, some people use other things. Uh, we were trying to standardize, but I've kind of given up trying to force everybody into the same thing, so we let teams decide pretty much. It's an empowered team. Yeah. Uh, we have a certification, pro this is from, also from Jenna, we have a certification process where users must complete several Moodle courses uh, as well in person activities before taking a quiz to be granted their certification. Every two years, a user must take any additional courses added added the catalog and retake the quiz. Are there any best practices you would, rec would recommend to host this recertification process in Moodle? Well, this stuff is happening, but I cannot talk about it. Okay. There will be, there will be an announcement early next year about this kind of functionality. Awesome. Uh, is there potential of adding word count as a factor in activity completion for forums? That's from Jessica it's Bryant. A word count in activity completion. So the activity is complete when you've just typed enough words. Uh, as a factor. So adding word count as a factor in activity completion for forums. That's a cool idea. I have no, I've never heard that idea before. I don't know. Uh, yeah, good one to, to raise. Jessica Bryant, if you're here, see Martin afterwards. <laughs> Thank you. Preferably over drinks or something. Hey, later. Is there a comment? Um, I think the panel and I were discussing, if I recall, the uh, forum activity does have a word count um, attached to it. Um, in the posts, it does, so yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. So does online text assignment plus have those features, but yeah, it doesn't trickle down to activity completion. That could be cool, I know. I've moderated plenty of forums where I wish people would do that. Yeah, and a max. Yeah, that would yeah. be cool. <laughs> There's always a workaround. Kelly Fleming asks, can you download an entire lesson with quiz answers? Uh, are you asking me? Yep. Can you download a whole lesson with quiz answers? I don't know sure that. I can't parse that sentence. Can anyone else? Like for that mobile app, like can you download a lesson with the questions potentially even, and then like take it is my best guess? I think I know what they mean. So like on a quiz, how you can print the whole quiz on one page and have it auto-fill in the answer type deal. So you can print the quiz and have What? I did say download, not, but I guess. Is Kelly Fleming here? Can you explicate? Okay. Is that you think? Runner. Martin's off the hook. Can you just let us know where you're from? Sure. My name is Vanessa. I'm from eThink. Um, there's actually a plugin that does this. It's Lesson Export, I want to say is what it's called. And then there's also site-wide settings you can configure so that you can determine what can be done with a PDF after it's exported. So for example, can the user also print it? Like could they have a hard copy of it, et cetera. So we have a couple clients using that. Awesome. Moodle partner to the rescue. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd done that recently. I just didn't remember the name of the book. Uh, so David asks, does Moodle have plans to implement an LRS, bracket XAPI, into Core? I certainly would like to. 
Uh, if anybody wants to collaborate on a project like that, I think it would be a good one. There is some support from the back of the room. Yeah, I, the, I think it makes sense to drag stuff into Moodle for the analytics. Yeah, I, I, I think all the externals, if you have LTIs out there, that all those logs should be filtering back into Moodle, put in a database, subject to analytics, would be way more interesting. Awesome, but thank you, Martin. Not on the roadmap as yet. Okay, good, good. But wait. <laughs> So vote them up? There are proposals in the tracker to do exactly that. So vote them up. Vote them up. Because votes in the tracker are part of how we know if that's what you really want. And for those who aren't sure what you're talking about, could you explain the, the Moodle tracker and how that works? Mm. If you go to tracker.moodle.org, um, you will see a list of all of the currently open issues, whether they are bug reports or feature requests, that you the, the Moodle community have made, including us as internal Moodle folks, and you have an opportunity on an, almost any of those to add your comments and to vote. Um, you just need to make an account. It is separate from your regular Moodle.org account, but anybody can make an account, and you can post a new feature request. You can vote on an existing feature request. You can comment and say, we need this too, and here's an extra thing that I need to tell you about how it has to work for it to solve our problem. Or if you are a developer or somebody at your institution is a developer and you have code that actually does some of this and you would like to promote it and share it, you can add that in to the tracker item and say, we have a, at least a partial solution here that we would be willing to share. Thank you so much. I hope we're all learning things this afternoon as we're uh, answering each other's questions. That seemed like a good one. So round three, uh, these questions come under the category of, we need some help. Uh, how could you help us do this? So these are kind of service questions. So we'll start with a few for the panel, uh, and then we'll see whether other people in the audience also uh, want to ask some service questions. Um, so Peggy asks, randomly, and especially after installing a plugin, the Moodle data uh, slash cache directory ownership changes. This stops the services from running. Any idea why this happens? We, all of our tech guys are like still in the back being uh -huh. working, like, so, sorry. That's not We're asking funny. the wrong people. Michelle, yeah. did you want to take a swing? Hi. We have something at the back. Thank you. Yeah. Well, this is actually the second half of the question, but if the if the permissions change on the Moodle data folder, you got to open it back up, obviously. But as to why it's changing, it must be an an account that somehow has the privileges to change it, which is. I don't know how that would happen, but um, you just open that Moodle data folder back up if it changes the permission, but somebody else can help me with why it got changed. And it, had to, it, it must be an account that has a higher level of permissions that can change it. Anyway. It's your question. Thanks, Peggy. Peggy, did you want to clarify the question? Yeah, it's on an server and it's being hosted. server, it's being hosted. And I'm not sure if they're doing something and it randomly changes the permissions on my directories because I go back in and I open them back up and the services start running again. You think so? Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Something's impacting it, but I'll load a plugin and instantly it changes it. It's Apache? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I think we need a point over here allocated for helpful answers. Thank you, Team Awesome. We're back. Um, OK, Internet Explorer 11. <laughs> Next. <laughs> so we're, we're yet to have. 
We're yet to have an answer which is switch it off and switch it back on again, or just switch it off. <laughs> but there are some institutions that mandate a variety of browsers, and, and a lot of us have had to support them over the years, and it sounds like, Peggy, you're one. hospitality with this training. <laughs> so. it, it's not supported by anyone on the internet. No, it isn't really. Even, I think even Microsoft dropped support for it. It's not supported. So just... Well, but if they're using a 486 in DOS, you, you know, you, you would tell them to upgrade, right? So the rest of the question was, was around the rendering of the graphics. Yeah, yeah graphics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know if there was any permission thing that could be changed. Because okay. I would, of course, have to go to corporate security to have them change it. Because that's why it's locked down. I can't yeah. even change the permissions to try it. Sounds like a human resources issue. <laughs> oh, no. The, the, it's all an issue, trust yeah. me. <laughs> Michelle? I, I wonder, though, if you could use a legacy theme. Like, there are settings to allow you to decide you know, for mm -hmm. people that are on really old browsers. Oh, yeah, to, that's a to good have idea. this theme up here, so that would be one option. Uh -huh. um, I hear Moodle 2.0 was really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> and, and I have to tell you, I've only been on it for about five months on Moodle, and we started at 3.5, so it's yeah. like, Time we're just going to drain the ocean. Right the okay. <laughs> there are older versions out there, so you're, yeah. I'm sure you're not the only one. Yeah. Good luck, keep going. Uh, Stephanie May asks, our change requests for Moodle have to go through an IT and service in another country. Uh, it's time consuming and cumbersome. Any advice on bypassing them or managing that process? Yes, I have a lot of advice for that. <laughs> all, the, all the Moodle partners are like, <laughs> go, go for it. I mean, that's my advice, is, is see one of us, any, one of our Moodle partners. Obviously, I'm a little bit partial to mine, but any of us should be able to help you. Uh, make your life way easier. Um, call me, talk to me. More generally though, I mean, I'll absolutely second that, but um, I don't know what your change management process looks like, but I know that we've talked in the past with customers about a change management process that goes beyond IT, because it shouldn't be IT alone making your decisions about how your site works. So um, if you can create a change management board, that allows those who have instructional decision-making power to work together with the IT folks, then hopefully that um, reduces the level of combat um, and helps you move things through more efficiently. Also usually helps in keeping the instructional folks informed about um, when updates are coming and things are going to, you know, things might break and stuff like that. Thanks, Michelle. And probably one thing I'd add on the subject of changes, um, for those that are self-hosting Moodle, um, one type of change you want to probably particularly avoid is a change to core. Uh, would any of my panelists also agree to that? Uh, when we change Moodle core, um, it's not technically Moodle. I mean, it's still Moodle, but it's not the Moodle that Martin made. <laughs> so when you go to upgrade it, um, you could potentially open yourselves into a Pandora's box mm -hmm. when that happens. Uh, so we want to make sure our changes are relevant or built into Moodle's design practices, that uh, plugins that have been vetted through the Moodle plugins directory, not uh, plugins that are in the directory, have been reviewed by Moodle.org and are generally safe to install on your Moodle site. Uh, but we want to refrain from making um, changes to core that could negatively affect Moodle in the future. You may fix or get what you want today, uh, but tomorrow is not promised. <laughs> we just worked with a client that spent three to four hundred hours of development time working themselves back out of yeah. customizations so they could upgrade. Yeah. So uh, for those of you who are hearing about Moodle Partners for the first time, uh, Moodle HQ um, has had this wonderful relationship over many years with tremendous organizations that we certify to be our service providers. Um, and there's a, there's a global network of Moodle partners. It's not easy to become a Moodle partner. There's a, 
um, a set of requirements that we have, expertise and experience. Uh, so when you work with an official certified Moodle partner, you can be confident around their expertise. Um, but you can also know that in working with them, you're directly contributing to the sustainability of the Moodle project because we're, we're in business together. Um, so thanks to the Moodle partners for participating this week and all the work that you do and our integration partners. Um, you know, we're all here to make you more successful. So if you hadn't thought about using a Moodle partner before, come talk to any one of them at the, uh, at the uh, exhibition space because um, they're super helpful. We have a quick comment quick, or question. Yeah, a quick comment on the editing core and sustainability. Um, so I was kind of wrapping up. At, at UCLA, we have one of our developers that is on the developer list that Martin showed earlier. And the reason for that is we edit core uh, pretty often, but we also submit patches back to Moodle HQ, which they then implement, and then our patches become part of core. So that's part of the sustainability model in which um, your core changes can go into Moodle and then you're not maintaining it. Is Rex here, by the way? No. Ah. So uh, an extra point over here, it is time to get a tally. <laughs> so a late, a late point addition, where are we at? <laughs> I told you that point five would come in handy. Team, awesome, can we give Team Radical a big round of applause? And come on Team Radical, let's give Team Awesome a big round of applause as well. And can you all thank our panellists this afternoon, they've been great. It's been a pleasure uh, spending this time together. Uh, so thank you all, Dr. Moodles. Keep your honorary PhDs, okay? Keep helping each other. That's what the Moodle community is all about.